Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with Online Security, and we're back with another Cert Master Lab for Security Plus 701. Here's another lab that we're going to be simulating another social engineering attack, okay? We're going to show you how effective social engineering is, and we're going to talk about some key countermeasures to prevent this. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, first thing we're going to do, obviously, we're going to log into our machine. All right, we're going to open up a terminal and copy a tool called Netcat. Netcat is known as the Army Swiss knife of pen testing. So let's copy that over, right? While we're copying that over, I'll talk a little bit. The reason why it's called the Army Swiss knife of pen testing is because we can do so many different things with it, right? We can open up ports with it. We can send files with it. We can establish connections with it. We can ping other devices. It can be used for so many different things. All right, so this command that we did right here is going to copy over Netcat from where it is currently. And we're going to copy it over to our website directory, the var www.html.netcat.exe, right? Just to confirm that it's over there, we're going to ls var www.html. Boom, we can see that we have a few files here. Oh, I don't see our Netcat file here. So I'm going to copy that one more time. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Boom. There we go. So I'm gonna open that up, right? We can see the netcat file here. We can see this reverse shell bat script. We can see this rs-dl bat script. We're gonna see what those are doing in a second. But remember, we're doing this command right here. We wanna copy netcat from where it currently is. Here, I'll do it over here. We wanna copy netcat from where it currently is. It's under the user folder, which is, well, it's under the binaries folder, which is under Windows resources folder, which is under the share folder, which is under the user folder. So we want to copy netcat from where it is and we want to place it under the html folder which is under the www folder which is under the var folder right and we want to name it netcat.exe cool we got that over there now what we're going to do right we can take a look at these these files right here right that that's in that location we can cat var www html reverse that all right, so this right here is going to establish a netcat connection back to us, right? So what's going to happen is we're going to have our victim machine right here. Then we're going to have our attacking machine over here. This victim machine, we're going to get it to download this netcat.exe file, right? This right here is going to download the netcat.exe file. That's what this script is doing. Once they get it downloaded over here, we're going to use netcat to establish a session to connect back to us. So let's take a look at that. All right before that, let's take a look at one more file which is the RS file. So this file right here is gonna download Netcat for us, right? It's gonna download Netcat onto the victim machine, sorry. Right? So we're just gonna take a look at it to see how it's working in real time. All right, so before we go over to our victim machine, let's start up Apache 2, right? Because that's gonna start up our web service. That's gonna make everything under this directory available for downloads, all right? So this directory, var www.html, once we start Apache 2 up, it's gonna make all of these files available to be downloaded. All right, go ahead, score that, get your points. We're gonna start up the Netcat listener. We're starting that up on port 7890. So that means Netcat is just waiting for a connection. Remember, the victim is going to connect back to us. One of those scripts is going to download Netcat onto the victim machine. It's gonna download Netcat onto the victim machine and then another one of those scripts is gonna force Netcat to connect back to us. We're just waiting right here for them to connect. Now you gotta think about it. How do we send them that, how do we get them to download that link? Well, that's gonna be a social engineering attack. That's the part of social engineering that is gonna persuade them to download that link. Here's an email that's gonna be sent to them and in the email, obviously you wouldn't just paste a link like this. You would have to hide it, embed it inside of a word. They're going to get this email and they're going to download, hopefully, right? If we're the attackers, we hopefully want them to click on this email and you're going to see what it's, what it does in a second. We're going to switch over to MS 10. Let's log in as Jamie. We're going to go ahead and open up Firefox and we're going to mimic them clicking on the link in this email, right? If they were to click on this link in this email, this is what would happen. Boom right it would send them here obviously in the email we don't want this showing because they may all right they're more than likely won't click it all right so we want to embed this with within a word maybe within support or some type of word to make it more convincing but once they do click on it it's going to download that first script remember that script that we had the rs-dl.bat that batch script 
this is going to download netcat on their computer so we're going to run this and look it's downloading netcat right it is downloading netcat once that is done it's going to start netcat Um, I lost that. I don't know what happened here. Okay, there we go. All right, so now, so it downloaded Netcat 100% complete. Then the next script goes to work and it's going to start up Netcat and look what it did. It started up a session. It said, hey, Netcat, I want you to connect back to this system on this port. All right, so now let's go ahead and get our points. I'm going to go to the other machine and we can see that we have that session now. All right, how do we know? We can do who am I? We're Jamie, right? We have remote code execution of Jamie's computer. Remember what just happened, a social engineering attack. We emailed the victim a persuasive email, right? That's a phishing attack. And in that email, we asked them to click on a link. That link downloaded one of our scripts. It downloaded one of our bash scripts. And then that bash script downloaded Netcat on their system. Then we had another script that told Netcat to connect back to us on our listener. How do you stop stuff like this? Well, one, no one should be clicking on malicious links in their emails, right? No one should be clicking on malicious links in their emails. Host name we can see is MS10, right? And we should have some rules that are blocking scripts from running, right? Scripts, those malicious scripts, there should be some type of rule blocking that from running. All right, let's go to these questions. They're going to help us with some remediation control. So what is the best defense against social engineering, right? It is training. Training, 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 training. Social engineering doesn't really take a lot of technical skills. It, we just have to be good people. Uh, we have to be a people person, right? We have to be able to create persuasive emails. We have to be able to understand our target and convince them to do things, right? So training is going to stop social engineering attack. A social engineering attack is often long and complex. No, that is not true. They don't have to be long. They don't have to be complex. It could be a simple phone call where you're just giving me your social security number. Over here, it was a simple email where we convinced the Jamie to click on a link. What technical defense would be a means to prevent the social engineering attack of this lab from being successful? Well, we want to block the execution of all unknown code, right? That code should not have been executed. And we want to prevent certain outbound actions. Egress is outbound. It's traffic going out of your network, right? We want to block that. That port 7890, that shouldn't have been allowed to be used to establish that remote connection. All right, what type of training enhances user ability to recognize and respond to situation? That's gonna be situational awareness, right? Social engineering attacks originate only from the outside. False, it can be from the outside or the inside of your company. Y'all, if you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to smash the like button. If we were moving at a pretty swift pace, that is intentional. Please use the features on YouTube to slow the video down to your preference. All right, we want to get through these videos as quickly as possible with as much information as possible so you're not staring at the screen for an hour. Other than that, I will see you all in the next video. Peace.